Okay, so here we are at DeepCon 15 in the beautiful venue in uh, Fuji yep. with uh, the master of science fiction, Ian McDonald. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have some uh, chat, some talk about his books and uh, uh, other interesting things. I prepared some um, uh, questions. Yes, which I know nothing about, yes, so it will be a complete yes. surprise. <laughs> All right, uh, first question. Um, um, rarely, I found uh, a writer exploring as much the future as the geography of our world. Many of your novels are set in exotic environments, at least for a Western reader. Why is that? What's the project behind such intention? Yeah, um, okay, I mean, I, I've lived almost all my life in Northern Ireland. Uh, Northern Ireland, interesting place, but it's never going to be one of the great kind of science fiction centres of the world. I mean, I, I've always grown up, I've always, grew, I've always felt I've like grown up on the margins of what's happening, you know, in Britain and in Ireland and in Europe and in the West. Northern Ireland is a fairly marginal place. And I've always been kind of interested in, <coughs> in other places on the edge as well. Because when we say, you know, because when we think science fiction, we always think that, that the big silver spaceship will arrive over the White House or possibly over, <laughs> yeah. possibly over uh, the Eiffel Tower or something. But but we never think that you know that it will arrive in one of these kind of marginal places. But in this modern age, I mean, everyone gets the same technology at the same time. Whenever like the new iPhone comes out, people get it in. Nigeria has the same time as they get it in America, has the same time as they get it in India, the same time as they get it in China. Everyone gets the same stuff at the same time. And I'm kind of interested in what those other people do with it. Um, William Gibson once said that the future is here, it's not. It's just not evenly distributed. I actually disagree with that. I think it, does, it is actually evenly distributed. It's just that other people are doing more interesting and funky things with it <laughs> than we are, or okay. different things. Nice. And so what, what, what I've been doing over the past, know, the past 20 years probably is kind of pushing those two ideas together of taking places that seem to be on the margin of science fiction, taking fairly standard science fiction ideas, <coughs> like in River of Gods, it's artificial intelligence, in Brazil it's parallel universes and quantum computing, and in the Dervish House it's nanotechnology, all, all conventional stuff and putting it somewhere else on the edge of the margin and seeing what happens to it. So that's kind of the, that's kind of my kind of, uh, yeah. yeah, that's been my, 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 my theory, my philosophy mm -hmm. of what I've been writing. Um, some books are known for their capacity to describe the zeitgeist of, the, of their time. I think about 1984, Stranger in a Strange Land, Neuromancer, while you, on the contrary, have the special ability to capture the genius Lochi, the mm. jinn of a particular nation. So how did you manage to know so much about faraway countries <laughs> if that's not a secret? <laughs> I have a huge army of paid researchers. <laughs> uh, no, I don't actually. I don't, have a, I don't have a huge army of paid researchers. I mean, I, mean, I write about Turkey, I write about India. I get stuff wrong all the time. But I can write about also, I can write about what happens at the bottom of my street and get stuff wrong about that. Yeah. So what I do is kind of like, it's kind of like Christian Bale with less swearing. It's like method acting. I kind of try and get myself into the mindset of the culture I'm writing about. Um, and it's quite a long process. It takes two or three years. I mean, the, uh, River of Gods took Let's see, I pitched the book in 1999, it came out in 2004, so it's kind of a five year long project. And I read a lot, I cook a lot of the food, I buy loads of music, um, I read the newspapers online, which is great, and I go there because I can't write about a place unless I've been there. Yeah. Um, a place on this world I can't write about yeah, unless sure, I've been there. Sure, sure, sure. So I, I, I try to travel there as much as I can and just kind of. It's like method acting, you know, just kind of immerse myself in the culture until I think I'm starting to think that. Okay. The plots of your books are amazing. You deliberately set on a quest for finding the most symbolic elements of a country and insert them in the flaws or needs of the characters. 
So we end up with figures like Santiago in Necroville, Marcelina in Brazil, Adnan in the Dervish House, and Shiv and Jaime Rao in the River of Gods, just to mention a few, which all portray some typical aspects of their own society. Is this a sort of psychosociography, let's say, yeah. a feature cultural mapping disguised as a science fiction novel? How can you conceive such interwoven plots? How do you pull the strings to orchestrate such complex symphonic fiction? Yeah, I am so glad you mentioned psychogeography. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ian Sinclair, uh, English writer actually, and kind of a psychogeographer of London, and particularly Hackney. And it's kind of the and, and he peels the layers back and kind of and kind of reveals hidden and bizarre histories and, and in the lives of people who live there. <coughs> I mean. Um, and plotting really is I, I hate plotting actually <laughs> really hate, I, it's for me for me it's actually the most boring bits of writing is actually coming up with a plot I used to keep everything in my head uh, rip, uh, river, river of Gods the entire plot structure was in my head and I have an outline to work from but, but, it's, but, it, but it's not terribly detailed it's just where the major plot beats are uh, but I started moving on to using software called Scrivener, yeah. <laughs> and it makes plotting so much easier because yeah. you, know, you just put cards up on it right. with, with plot points and, and plot beats and what happens in each chapter, um, and that's an awful lot easier than holding something that sounds different. But originally it was 800 pages, yeah. holding that entire book in my head. Um, I, mean, I mean, you were asking about characters, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm... It's quite fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, Marceline was interesting because I used to work in television. Yeah. And all those terrible television shows. <laughs> I, those are all yeah. shows. Those are all shows <laughs> I have actually pitched at some point <laughs> in my life. Yes, the one about leaving the car outside and that's just for someone to steal and then see if they can keep it if they can escape the cops. I have pitched that oh, show, yeah, 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 all, all of them. So, so, so she has kind of my alter ego and some <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here we are. Uh, second part of the interview with uh, Ian McDonald in Fuji at the Dipcon 15. So, the British invasion has Ooh. arrived on the chariot of new space opera, <laughs> written by superstar authors such as Alastair Reynolds, yeah. Paul McCauley and Peter Hamilton. Instead, you stick to our old planet Earth. I found this a very brave choice. Can you tell us more about it, or is it just a coincidence? Um, yeah, um, I think I've always been, I've, I've always been interested in this world, and I've always been interested in kind of near future science fiction because I like to know how to get from where we are now to where I'm writing about. I like there to be a kind of direct connection. Now, I mean, I have written kind of big far future space yeah. opera, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I quite enjoy it, but I, I just don't have that kind of sense of connection to it that I feel with kind of more near future stuff though having said that um, the book I'm writing at the moment I mean, the, um, I mean I'm still writing about developing societies and emerging economies yes. but this one just happens to be on the moon in 2089 so uh, so it's not quite space opera it's, 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 like, it's like the first place out of space <laughs> first step <laughs> first step out of the moon actually it's kind of okay. like um, yeah my, my, my publishers are kind of excited about it they, okay. it, um, it's, it's about it's about uh, riv rivalry and, and family feuds and uh, corporate wheeling dealing. A uh, game of domes is how but they think could of it. it be also so Ian McDonald finally embraces space opera? <laughs> it's, it's, def it's definitely not space opera. It's, okay. uh, it's, more, uh, okay. it's more like the Borgias. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the Borgias on the moon. Oh, right. Dallas on the moon. Okay, then. <laughs> Have you ever thought of turning your stories into a movie or a web series? Mm. <laughs> I mean, I've had I've had work optioned for film, um, and the, the the series I'm doing at the moment, uh, Luna, is we're work, working on a TV proposal in parallel with a production company because apparently there's a gap in the market for a science fiction series, and um, basically, as I said, it's like the Borges is on the moon. Yeah. So, so, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. so because you're on the moon, you can't get <laughs> off. You're stuck. <laughs> <with it. laughs> Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, and we're kind of developing that in parallel. Um, 
Nothing. We've had some interest, but I can't. I can't talk much more about it. That's about all I can okay. say. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, well, but talking about cross media science yeah. fiction, yeah. Uh, what is your relationship with TV series like *Beast Space Nine* or *Babylon 5*? Yeah, I was. I was, yes, I, was big, I, I was a big Babylon, big, big Babylon 5 fan that came out. I mean, I think because it thought big. Um, yeah. I, I mean, the acting is terrible. The <laughs> scripts weren't great, but but by God, they thought big. I mean, I, I used to record it in VHS, and I would watch the space battles twice because they did really good space battles. <laughs> and there are st still some moments in, in Babylon Five. I remember of just pure science fiction. Woo! You know the you know, the kind of the real kind of sci-fi rush you yeah. get when yeah yeah, um, yeah I mean I grew up watching Star Trek the original series mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I still watch um, I watch the new Doctor Who I'm not, I'm not a fan of it because I don't I'm not really a fan of anything I, I don't quite have the fan mindset mm -hmm. but I enjoy it very much and um, I kind of like what they're doing with it it's, it's, it's interesting <coughs> um High budget series like Game of Thrones yeah. versus low budget web series. Yeah, yeah. The market is offering chances to new voices. Yes. Yeah. Do you believe in this development? Could the social network become a real financing tool for culture and science fiction? Possibly. The problem is that people won't pay for content. Everyone assumes that online content should be free by yeah. right, and it's getting it's it's monetizing it somehow. The thing about a web series, which is what's great about it, is you know you 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 it's a, it's back to drugs again. You give the first you give the first three out free, and then, and then you start charging for what happens next. That might work possibly. Um, there's a great movie out a couple of years ago um, by an English director. It's called Monsters, a low budget science fiction film set in uh, along the US Mexican border where alien biological packages have come down and started colonizing the area making it this kind of massive no go zone and um, it was it was it was a good film um, on the money he made it for it just production standards were quite astonishing and you can do that kind of thing now in web series as well i mean i mean, th I mean th three guys three girls with laptops you can basically you have everything you need to uh, yeah. to make a, a web series from, okay. from from editing, scripting, editing, uh, post production, soundtrack. You do the whole lot on, on, yeah. on, on laptops. And, yeah. and now, the most difficult question: uh -huh. <laughs> Why haven't you choose Italy as one of your books, <laughs> a two millennia old <coughs> country <coughs> with a dark present and an even more unfathomable future? <laughs> Isn't that enough for one of your scenarios? It's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, I'm interested in what's going on down around Lampedusa with all, oh. with, 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 with all the immigrants coming up from Af coming up from Africa. Because I think that's the first sign of one of the first signs of global warming. Yeah. You know, that's that the climate change is yeah. taking hold, and we're and we're seeing the shore of North Africa now reaches the, you know to the southern shores of Europe. I think it's the first climate change related m migration. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that and that interests me, and, and that's something I'm kind of looking into. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got so much stuff here. To be honest, it's. it's <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to know where to start. I'm always interested in divisions in societies. Oh, well, um, yeah. you find plenty here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I was I was in Serbia a few years oh, back, and, and that and that was very interesting. I've, and I've used some of my Serbian experience, actually not in a science fiction book, but in, in a play I'm yeah, writing. Yeah, actually, yeah. that's um, I mean, stuff stuff turns up all over the place. I mean, I may not write about anything directly now, but years from now, I'll go, oh yes. That, yeah, that thing, I, yes, that experience I remember from Fuji, <laughs> and I'll put it in. Well, tell us what we have to do to get inside. Oh, <laughs> 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 <A> bribery works. <laughs> bribery okay. works. Yeah. Off the record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So this was uh, the last question. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Cool.